Special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. What's up guys? In today's video we're going to be machining this piece of brass and this piece of blade steel into a Swiss Army ring. Let's get started. So first things first, I need to cut off a piece of brass for us to work on and it needs to be thin enough here that I can fit it into my lathe and work with it. And one thing that's important to note with this whole project, I'm using brass because it's a really easy material to work with and so especially when I'm doing a first edition of a ring like this where it's just kind of a prototyping stage, this is a material that you definitely want to be working with. It's really forgiving and it's just a lot easier to machine in general. So my next step is going to be cutting an off-center hole through the middle of our brass. And the reason I'm making the hole off-centered is to give me a little bit of extra room on the other side of our brass piece. And you'll see how I use that in a second once I switch over to the mill. Now I've got the hole to the diameter that I want and then I'll be using my boring bar here and just face off both edges of the ring. That way we've got flat surfaces to work with. Now I'll be switching over to my mill and you'll see I've got this tungsten carbide end mill here. This is going to make quick work of our brass here. And this process is fairly simple. I've got my ring mounted to an expanding ring mandrel and I have that into my rotary table. And then I just want to face off three edges of this ring. So I want to make it kind of a rectangle shape where I've got a flat surface on the top of the ring and then both of those edges are both squared off. But instead of making it flat on the other side so that it's kind of a square shape, I'm going to leave that round. That way it's a much more comfortable ring to wear. Now that I have all three faces cut into the ring, I'm going to switch over to my belt sander and I'll just use this to round off some of the corners, just clean the whole thing up a little bit. Now that I'm done with the sanding, you can see the ring is already starting to take shape. You can kind of imagine where those blades are going to fit in. Now my next step will be drilling the hole and that's where I'm going to put the pin. That's what's going to fix the blades in place once we have the grooves cut into the ring. Now before I cut the actual grooves into this, I'm laying everything out using these calipers. So I'm just measuring everything, making sure everything will fit exactly how I want it to. And then I carefully selected the correct diameter of end mill for this. And that's because I needed the groove to be a pretty precise thickness. I wanted the blades to fit in there, but not have a lot of wiggle room. And so what I ended up getting was a fit where I could barely get the blade to jam into the groove. And then I figured once I sanded the blades down a little bit, polished them up, all of that, I'd have plenty of room for them to swivel freely. And because I'm using such a thin end mill, I'm being very careful not to break it. And so that's why you'll see I take such small passes. I just remove just hundredths of an inch at a time. And I just go over and over until I get the groove cut. And all in all, I ended up breaking two of my end mills. And so even though I was being fairly careful, you still end up breaking some of your equipment. And so just patience is key at this step, but I eventually made it and the grooves were all impressively uniform. And so I was really happy with the way those turned out. Now 
I've got the brass base of our Swiss Army ring finished, but before I begin working on the blades, I wanted to take a minute to talk about Skillshare, which is today's sponsor. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. And these classes can be extremely helpful, especially if you're a small business owner like myself, if you're trying to learn new skills or techniques in order to take your business or whatever it is you're working on to the next level. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes from experts working in their fields. So you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work you love. So over the past two weeks, I've been using my membership to learn more about product photography. So if you didn't know this already, I actually take most of the pictures that you see on my Ring website. And I don't have any formal training, I've just kind of picked it up as I've gone. And so you'll see my pictures, they're not always perfect. By using Skillshare, I've been able to learn new techniques, both for my camera and for my editing software, that allow me to make my product photos better. Skillshare is also more affordable than most learning platforms out there. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And if you're one of the first 500 people to sign up using the link in the description, you'll get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. So big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. This took five days to film rather than the normal two that I take. And so seriously, this video would not have been possible without them. So thank you Skillshare and thank you the audience for supporting my sponsors who in return support me. Now back to the video. Now that I've got the grooves cut, that's all the machining I'm going to be doing on the main piece here. You'll see me selecting the correct uh, diameter of brass pin that will fit into the ring later. And then from here on out, I'll get started on machining the actual blades. And for the actual blade material, I'm using this piece of high speed machining steel. This should actually hold a pretty good edge. And I'm just covering the whole thing in Sharpie. That will allow me to scratch lines into it. That way I can use my template blade that I made as just a prototype. And then I can trace around that three times. And that way I can make three fairly identical blades from this one piece. Now to cut the blade blanks out, I'm just using an angle grinder and I just cut out the rough shape and I leave a little bit of extra room. And once I have all three of the pieces cut out, that's when I'm going to be switching over to a sanding step, which will be a lot more precise. That way I can get a good, clean and consistent shape to all three of the blades. And then to sand them all to the same exact profile, I just stacked all three of them onto this piece of plywood. The plywood gives me something to hold on to, and then I can actually glue the blades to it and so it'll actually stick on. And so I'm able to make three identical blades and it's fairly quick and fairly easy. And then finally I used a file and this was to just get into some of the trickier corners that I couldn't get with the belt sander and then just touch everything up, make sure it was nice and uniform how I wanted it. Now at this point I've got all three of the blades shaped and I was able to do a test fit and this was really nice. It was good to see this progressing. I had spent about 10 hours on this project so far. So it was just really promising to see everything kind of coming together. 
Next I annealed the metal using this blowtorch and you just want to heat it up slowly, let it cool down slowly, just repeat that process until you can get the steel soft enough that you can actually drill through it. And that's important because I need to drill through all three of these in order to fix it into the ring uh, with the pin that we'll be doing later. And then for one of the blanks I'm going to be making a handmade file and that's what you see me doing here. So in order to make the file, I'm grinding away this piece of hardened steel here into sort of a chisel shape. And what I'll be using this for is I'll just hammer a bunch of fairly harsh lines into the side of our blade blank. And that will leave us with a rough surface that when you run your fingernail over it or just whatever you need to file, you can get it to actually remove some of the material. And in order to actually get a functioning file, I had to do a little bit of experimenting and I did a lot of it off camera. And so what you see me do at first where I cut the two 45 degree angles into this, that's not the best thing that you want for making a file by yourself. If you're interested in making a file, which is kind of a weird thing, I don't blame you if you're not, but there's a really interesting video by Clickspring on YouTube. If you search that up, he made a really interesting video on hand making files. So check that out if you're weird like me. But anyways, I was eventually able to figure out the whole homemade file making thing. What I discovered was that you want to make the angle of your chisel as harsh as you can. So you want it to be sharp so that it cuts jagged and deep grooves into your file. But the challenge is that you need the steel on the chisel part to be hard enough that it will actually impact a good clean line. And if it's too hard, it's going to chip off on you. So you got to be careful and there's a lot of just kind of different techniques that you got to experiment with. And so I was doing a lot of different stuff off camera on a scrap piece. Eventually I was able to get it down and it wasn't perfect as you will see, but it is a functional file. So I was really proud of that. It was a lot of fun. Of course it's not something that's super conventional or functional, but it's a homemade file. So it's just a lot of fun to make just for the sake of making it. So now I've got all three of the blade blanks laid out here. I'm going to convert one of them into the file here in a second. One of them I'll convert into just a regular knife. And then the third one I'm going to convert into a serrated knife. Now I'm going to be drilling holes into the end of each of the three blanks. This is where I'll attach it to the rest of the brass ring. Now that the blank is prepared, I'm ready to start hammering the file lines into it. And so you'll see I, there's not a lot of technique to it, but I'm just being really careful to try to make the spacing of my hammer lines as even as I possibly can. Now I've got the file finished and I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. As you can see when I'm testing it out here I was able to remove a little bit of my fingernail material and that was before hardening it. And so it's working okay and it doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit uneven but that's okay because it's handmade and I like the fact that it looks like it's handmade. Now I'll switch over to our serrated blade and in order to make the serrations I just use a really simple technique. I'm just using the corner of my file here and I'm just filing in the 45 degree angle until I've got a nice and pretty consistent jagged sawtooth pattern. Now using the edge of my belt sander, I'm putting a taper onto the serrations of the blade. That way it'll be ready to sharpen here in a minute. Next, I will grind the taper onto our standard blade. That way I'll have both our serrated and our standard blade ready for sharpening here in a second. Now I'll be sharpening both of our blade blanks and the steps I take are really standard. I'm just using standard sharpening stones. I start with my coarsest block and I work my way all the way up to my finest one.
And with that, my second and third Swiss Army blades are finished. We've got our serrated one on my right, and then the standard blade on the left. So now we have all of the main components completed, but before I begin assembling the ring, because it is a permanent assembly, I can't take it apart. I need to make sure that they all have their final polish. And so I'm doing a really good, careful, and thorough job just making sure all of the different pieces are polished and ready to go. So now I've got everything finished how I want it. It's all super polished, ready to go. And I just need to do one final step and that is cutting grooves into the edges of the blades here. That way I can use my fingernail to help pry the blades out of the ring a little bit easier. Now for the final step, I'll need to fix the blades permanently in place, so I'll just be using this brass wire for that. Now here we go, the ring is finished, and this took a lot of time, a lot more time than I thought it would, but still, it was a really fun project and it turned out just how I wanted it to. It's just completely ridiculous. Obviously, this isn't a super functional tool, but you can see I show it off, I, I cut some carrots. Obviously, this isn't going to be your uh, go-to culinary tool of choice, but in a pinch, it's uh, a little bit better than just snapping carrots in half with your fingers. So. There's always that, plus you can file your fingernails on the go. So it's just kind of a win-win all around. So that's the Swiss Army ring, guys. Be sure to let me know what you think of it down in the comments below. If you're new to my channel, you can go ahead and subscribe. That way you can see my future content. And then of course, as always, you can follow me on my Instagram page. That's just at Patrick Adair Designs. That's where I do a lot of the behind the scenes content that you'll see me post, as well as giveaways, things like that. But that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.